Today we discuss derivation of Bernoulli's equation uh, from the base considering the basic laws of conservation of forces and mass. Bernoulli's equation, as we have mentioned before, is a very useful equation, very frequently used by hydraulic engineers, other engineers, and anybody who is dealing with fluids and is studying fluid flows. So we look at it, and first of all, we see that the forces acting on the fluid along a streamline. When we are making this kind of statement, we are also restricting the fluid flow fields. Now here the sentence is very important, that the forces acting on a fluid particle along a streamline. So note it down and I will come to it again later on. And also what is important, what are we considering? That the sum of kinetic potential, the flow energy, and along a streamline is constant. And this is during a steady flow when compressibility is being ignored. Compressibility and frictional effects both are being ignored either because they are so small as compared to the other parameters, other forces that are in place yet that they contribute almost nothing and therefore it's practical and the results also experimentally we verify, practically we verify that this assumption is correct. So in these statements, few things to be noted. The forces are being considered along a streamline. The other thing is the conservation of energy, the conservation of kinematic potential, kinematic energy, and the fluid flow energy, both of them are constant along a streamline, and that rule is being followed for a steady motion. So that's another condition, that the motion is not unsteady. It's whatever we are going to derive, we are going to derive it for steady flows, and then they are incompressible. So compressible is the compressibility is being ignored and the fluids that we are considering are only incompressible and then the frictional forces that is viscosity is also being ignored. We are talking about the fluids which are inviscid. So several conditions our assumption have been made when we are deriving these equations. In spite of putting these conditions, these restrictions, still the equation derived, which was first of all derived by Daniel Bernoulli way back in 18th century, has been of extreme practical use, as we will see it in our discussions that follow later. So we consider a small portion a small element of a curve and therefore it is denoted by ds. For a general streamline, we consider a small portion ds and then we see what forces are acting on it. And if we see that the fluid motion is moving from left to right, and the x is in this direction, z in this direction, the gravitational force, the gravity as normal is in the downward direction, and then a pressure is applied, so on a small area or portion of the curve, which is denoted by ds as we do in infinitesimal calculus. Pressure being applied here will be P into dA. If P is the pressure and it is acting on a small area denoted by dA, 
the force acting on this side is P into dA. On the other side, after covering a distance of dS, the force acting on this, the pressure force, will be P plus dP, a small increment, into the same area. As you can see, the area remains the same. So it will be P plus dP into A. And then the weight, the gravitational force, the weight of the mass of the fluid under consideration is denoted by W. W normally is equal to Ng and it's acting in the vertical downward direction. But then if we have to see its forces that in which direction it is applied, the normal direction perpendicular to this small area, the weight W is making an angle theta with the direction that is perpendicular to the to this area that is under construction. So that thing is represented here in a side triangle in which although this side is supposed to be a curve, this is a curve, but it's small enough to be considered as a straight line. And then the angle theta, and if we take it its side into x side along the x axis, it will be dx, and in the vertical direction, the component will be dz. So from this, we try to write down the forces that are acting on it. And as we know of the Newton's law, force is equal to mass into acceleration. And we try to collect here all the forces that are acting on the mass of the fluid that is under consideration. And if we consider that, then we see P into dA moving from left to right, and that is taken to be in the x direction as positive direction. P plus dP into A is the force that is acting in this direction, shown here. And I showed, you, I showed it to you in the previous slide also. So therefore, the negative sign, because it's in the other direction. And then minus W sine theta. So W sine theta is the force that will be acting along ds, along this force. We are considering the forces that are along the curve. And therefore, the component of W in that direction is W sine theta. So what is sine theta? If we see here, and we try to make a diagram, we look at the triangle that I showed you in the previous slide, then sine of theta will be dz over ds. And I mentioned that, I repeat it again, that although ds is supposed to be a curve, but since we are considering a very small portion, then it's good enough to be considered as a straight line. So therefore, sine theta is equal to perpendicular over hypotenuse, which is uh, dz by ds. Then the other thing on the right-hand side, is mass into acceleration, and mass we know is represented as rho, the density, times the volume. Because density is defined as mass per unit volume, so this m is m over volume is equal to rho, and from this we can take m to be rho into the volume, and what is volume? Volume is area into the vertical direction, into the direction that is perpendicular to it. So if we multiply, instead of volume, we can write it as area times the height, the ds. So m can be replaced as this quantity. All this is m. w is equal to m into g, and therefore since mass is rho into dA into ds, 
we can write it as rho into dA into dS and G remains as G because G is the force acceleration due to gravity. Writing down and simplifying this equation, P dPa will cancel, this term will cancel with this and we are left from here with minus dP into dA minus rho g dA dS. This is coming from W and then sine theta can be replaced by dz by dS as from here as we have shown. And therefore simplifying and on the right hand side again m is replaced by its value rho dA dS times V times dV by dS. So the forces acting on this fluid element are reduced to this force and I write this equation again so that we can see what we are doing and here if I apply we can see that dA is occurring in all the terms so we divide throughout by dA and we are left with dP minus rho g into dz because this dx cancels out with this ds. Similarly, this ds cancels out with this ds and we are left with minus dp minus rho g dz into rho dA has already we have been divided. So rho into v into dv are the terms that are left. Now we can write them down as V dV can be written as half of differential of V square because if I may write it here because D of V square is equal to 2 V into dV. So that means that only V dV will be equal to half of dV square. And putting these terms in this equation, we obtain this equation turns out to be dP over rho, we have divided throughout by rho as well, dP over rho plus half dV square plus gz is equal to zero. So when we put all the forces acting on that element and equate them with by applying the Newton's law, this equation is reduced to this. And this is what we have arrived at, what we call as Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation for steady incompressible flow along a straight line. So many conditions are there. So when we integrate this equation, so this we will integrate all these terms and then we obtain integral dp by rho v square plus 2 plus gz and on the right hand side it will be a constant because when we differentiate it that will be 0 so we will get back the same equation and this can be reduced as P over rho plus V square by 2 plus GZ as the Bernoulli's equation. This is the most common form of Bernoulli's equation that we use in practice in real life. Remember that it is always it is valid for flow motion that is along any streamline. And this constant also means that the pressure forces at point P1 will be equal to pressure forces at point P2 for steady incompressible flow.